Where are they? <laughs> Where are they? We've already talked about what disciples of Jesus Christ are. We've established that disciples of Jesus Christ are born again, learners and obeyers of Jesus, destined to spend an eternity enjoying Jesus. Furthermore, we've established that whenever you zoom into a disciple of Jesus, whenever you look at a disciple of Jesus Christ up close, you'll see love and you'll see joy, and you'll see peace, you'll see patience, you'll see kindness, you'll see goodness, you'll see faithfulness, you'll see gentleness, you'll see faithful, or you'll see, you'll see self-control whenever you zoom in. Now my question is, where are they? <laughs> where are they? And that's the question we're going to explore here for the next few weeks. And this week, I want to convince you of the following reality. You can find disciples of Jesus Christ consistently sitting. You can find them consistently sitting under biblical teaching. You can find disciples of Jesus consistently sitting under biblical teaching. Listen, whatever news source you listen to, Whatever news source your parents listen to, whether it's Fox, whether it's CNN, whether it's the Daily Wire, whether it's the Young Turks, no matter which one it is, no matter how subtle it is, whichever it is, they're trying to convince you, they're trying to disciple you to think about this world in a specific way. They're discipling you into viewing this world in a certain way. That might get me in trouble, but it's true. They're trying, to, they're trying to make you view this world a specific way. Furthermore, every movie that you watch, every song that you listen to is preaching to you in some way. It's trying to make you feel a certain way. It's trying to make you view this world in a certain way. It's, trying to, it's preaching to you in some way. Every art form you intake is preaching to you in some way. Furthermore, in 2021, everyone, the, ran, the, the normal person, the average person in 2021 is exposed to about four to 10,000 advertisements every single day. And each of these advertisements are telling you to buy something or to visit somewhere or don't buy something or to go over here. They're trying to persuade you in a certain way, good or bad. And now lastly, <laughs> For those of us who have social media, whether it's Instagram or Twitter, especially Instagram or Twitter, we're looking at hundreds, maybe thousands of images every single day. And every filter that you see, every witty caption that you see it is persuading you or is trying to persuade you to look a certain way or to behave a certain way or to not look a certain way and or to not behave a certain way. And friends, the bottom line we're left with is this. Here are two weird realities that you must face. Number one, it's a big old persuasive world out there. It's a big persuasive world out there. Number two, Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. In other words, there is a way that seems right to us, but eventually it leads to destruction. And friends, this is why disciples of Jesus are dead set on the fact that they are revelation receivers. They understand, disciples of Jesus Christ understand that they are first and foremost revelation receivers. Page one of the Bible is one of the most fascinating pages of literature in all of the planet. To me, it's the most fascinating piece of literature in all of the planet. And right there, we are introduced to God. There's been a lot of sermons wasted in the book of Genesis because they think that page one is supposed to primarily tell you how old the universe is or it's primarily there to uh, tell you that evolution isn't true or it's primarily there to give you examples of faith for our lives. But friends, listen, it's not primarily there for those things. It's primarily there for us to take a look at the God who is there. The God that's giving me a breath in my lungs. The God that's giving you strength to think right now. That's who we're introduced to on page one of the Bible. And we see this God creating from nothing. 
God is creating from nothing. Okay, whenever you cook, whenever your parents cook, you guys are just blending ingredients together. You're making it colder, making it hotter, but you're just putting stuff together. But with God, he was not merely putting things together, but he was speaking things into existence. Light did not exist, and yet God said, let there be light, and light who did not, did not exist knew exactly what to do, okay? God created this universe from nothing. And then um, what he sees in Genesis chapter one is that in this world of raw materials, um, he puts in Adam and Eve. He creates out of his own image as a, as a trophy of his glory. He creates Adam and Eve. And then in Genesis chapter one, verse 28, God does something remarkable. He talks to them. Okay, he blesses Adam and Eve, and then he talks to them. Friends, don't miss that. A lot of identity in Christ books miss it. They talk about how Adam and Eve are dominion havers and they're image bearers, but they forget the fact that Adam and Eve are revelation receivers. God did not lead them, leave them to their own devices, but he spoke to them and gave them instruction. They were revelation receivers, and you and I are called to be revelation receivers as well. Okay, whenever things go bad, how often do you and I run to your buddy's advice? Or how often do you and I run to relatable song? But you and I, at our core, the, it, what, what's supposed to make our engine run is instruction from God. So disciples of Jesus know that they are to get instruction primarily from the Word of God. And we have God's Word contained in this book. And here's what this book says about this book. It says this, All scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in, right, for in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The New Living Translation puts it like this, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach what is true, and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us whenever we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare us and to, uh, to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Now, a lot of the times that the church is mentioned in the Bible, it's not necessarily mentioned as an organization like the structure of people or this denomination. No, no, no. A lot of the times that the Bible is or the refers to the church, it does not mention the church as an organization, but it mentions the church as an organism, namely a body. Okay, that's how the New Testament describes the church. Jesus is the head. His believers are his body. We are the body of Jesus. Now, this is awkward, but listen to how Jesus treats his body? This is in Ephesians chapter four, verses 11 through 14. It says this, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the, measure, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried, carried by um, every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Did you hear that? Okay. In order that the body would grow up and not be tossed around by the waves and winds in this persuasive world, in order that the body might grow up in maturity, God gave to the body apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Okay? His, so his people would grow up. In order for his people to grow up in maturity, God gave the church leaders who would teach his word. Where are the disciples of Jesus? Disciples of Jesus are sitting and learning under their teaching. They're sitting and learning under the, the leaders that God has appointed to lead the church. There are men, there, there are people that God has 
uniquely made and commissioned to be to have leadership in the church and disciples of Jesus are constantly at their feet listening to the word of God as it is taught. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 32 says this, whoever ignores instruction despises himself, but he who listens to reproof gains intelligence. Did you catch it? Whoever ignores instruction despises himself. So the Bible says, listen, if you are freestyling your life, okay, just kind of going by your emotion, going by what you feel with your hands in your ears, not listening to instruction, the Bible says you hate yourself. Think about, in the, think about that in the context of our culture where love yourself is a huge deal. If you are not following instruction, you hate yourself, the Bible says. And the instruction that the Bible is talking about is instruction is not just like following a recipe for this dessert. No, the instruction that the Bible is talking about in that passage, it's talking about instruction that revolves around the fear of the Lord. Okay, you need to spend time. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you need to spend time under biblical teaching. There's a lot more passage I could use, a lot more passages I could use, but I want to end this video like this. Where are the disciples of Jesus? They are sitting under teaching that is gospel-centered. Okay, disciples of Jesus are listening to pastors and listening to youth pastors and listening to youth leaders. They're listening to teaching that revolves around the person and the work of Jesus. They're listening to pastors that are broken records whenever it comes to Jesus. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, Paul is talking to his people and he realizes that he's being a broken record. So he says, listen, it's, it's, no, it's no problem for me to repeat these things. And it's also good for you to keep hearing these things. You need a pastor like that. <laughs> you need a pastor that's dead set on always talking about Jesus and always talking about what happened on the cross. So disciples of Jesus are constantly sitting under teaching that is gospel-centered. Furthermore, disciples of Jesus are always sitting under teaching that is scripture-saturated saturated with scripture. They're not just up there blabbing about their thoughts or opinions or their funny stories. Those things are good. God has uniquely wired each of us, Bible teachers, in a, in a way. But they're sitting under teaching that is biblically precise and just full, 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 full of this. Just filled with Bible. Furthermore, lastly, disciples of Jesus are sitting under teaching that is application driven. Listen, you wanna sit under teaching teachers that are gonna challenge you to live holy, that are gonna challenge you to live wise lives. They're gonna challenge you to be bold for Jesus. They're gonna challenge you in a way that you can navigate this world in a Christ-like manner, but they're also getting you ready for the next world. They're getting you ready to see Jesus. You don't want a bunch of pastors gonna tell you, listen, Here's how you get through the spring of 2021. No, you want a pastor who has a bigger vision. You want a teacher who is thinking about you seeing God and you being in front of God. You want that. You want a, a pastor who has sermons that are application driven. They're going to challenge you. You want a pastor that's going to be teaching gospel centered, uh, gospel centered messages that are scripture saturated and application driven. Friends, bottom line is this. You can find disciples of Jesus consistently sitting under biblical teaching. Blessings.